Okay, hello everyone. Today we're gonna to take a look at dimensional analysis. It sounds scary, but really it's just building on what we learned when we did English measurement conversions and metric measurement conversions. The only difference is now we're gonna be looking at instances where we have units on both the top and bottom of a fraction that must be changed to another unit. So before, when I could say, okay, if you have a unit on top, in order to cancel it, put it on the bottom, that's still gonna be true, but now we also have a second scenario where we start off with a unit on the bottom, and in order to cancel it out, we have to put it on top. So what we're gonna do now is take a look at some example problems together. So we're gonna try five together, five on our own, and then I'm gonna give you five problems to try for homework. So if we take a look at our lesson six folder on Schoology, you're gonna see an assignment in there called dimensional analysis. I'm also happy to report, this is the first assignment of the rest of the year where we're gonna be switching over to Google Docs. This is gonna eliminate those problems of some of us turning in blank assignments, which frustrated both you and me. So by using Google Docs, your work is gonna be saved automatically and it's much easier to submit than trying to save it to the desktop and then upload it later on. All right, let's take a look. So if you look, this is what the assignment should look like for you, and if you click on this link at the bottom here, you'll be able to open up the assignment. So the assignment looks like this, and we're gonna basically do exactly what we were doing before, which is to type into these boxes, and again, we're going to try and get multiple lines. So I'm just gonna jump back to the big board here again behind me. We're gonna set up the first problem together, and then we'll take a look at what that looks like when we type it into that form. So we're gonna start off here. We have 2.6 kilometers per day. So notice now that we have a unit on both the top and the bottom of our fraction. The other part that I want you to notice is when we're converting units, it has to be the same type of unit that we convert to. So if we have a length on top like kilometers, that gets converted to a different length, and in this case, we're gonna convert that to meters. On the bottom of our fraction, in the denominator, we have days, and that is a length of time. So we're gonna take that to weeks, which is also a length of time. So we can't go from a length to a day because that's two different types of quantities. But we can go from one length to another and one unit of time to another. Okay, so as we continue on, and this part's kind of nice because you get to choose what you want to do next. So I'm going to start off on top with kilometers. So if I have the unit of kilometers on top, in order to get it to cancel out, it has to go on the bottom. So I'm going to put that down here. And if you notice from my problem, I have meters up here. So I'm gonna to go to meters on top of my fraction. Now, we learned about this when we did metric conversions. Which one of those two units is larger? Well, let's draw that back up here. So here's our base unit. Then on this side, on the left side, where we have the larger ones, we have kilo, hecto, and deca. On the right side, we have the smaller ones, deci, centi, and milli. So in our base unit, we have meter, gram, and liter, depending on whether we're talking about a length, a mass, or a volume. So in this case, we're talking about a length, and we have meter, that's here, and we have kilometer, that's over here. So kilometer is the larger one. Remember the larger ones are further to the left. This side is smaller ones. This is the smallest one that we're going to talk about. So the larger one, if you remember, gets a one, and then you figure out how many spaces away it is to get from kilometers to meters. So we're going to go one, two, three spaces. That means we write a one with one, two, three zeros. Okay, that's a good first step. That allows me to cancel out my unit of kilometers. So right now, I have units of meters per day. I'm trying to get to meters per week. 
So I need to set up another fraction. This is the part that's going to be tricky for some of us. Because we're trying to cancel out the unit of days, days is on the bottom right now. So in order to cancel it out, we have to put it on the top of this fraction. And then we want to go to weeks. So we're going to put weeks on the bottom. And of course, everyone knows there are seven days in a week. So we're going to put seven days, one week. And now the only thing that we need to do is multiply through. So we have 2.6 times 1,000 times 7. And we wind up with an answer of 18,200. And if we take a look at our units, days have now crossed out. So that part's gone. We're left with 18,200 meters per week. Now, I'm going to encourage you to show the full answer from the calculator and then the rounded answer. And the reason is the final answer will only be worth one point. So if you were to do all of this correctly and you left your answer like this, you would only lose one point. But if you don't show these steps that lead up to your final answer, if your final answer is correct, I can't really award you any points because I'm not sure of what steps you took to get there. So just be mindful, on a test or a quiz, you're going to want to show as much work as possible. All of these steps that lead up to it are worth points. Now, I do want to make one clarification, because some of you did this on previous homeworks. I said that if you have a 1 on the top or bottom, you don't have to type it into the calculator. And that part is still true. Some of you misinterpreted that to, to mean that if you have a 1, you don't have to bother writing one kilometer on the bottom or one week on the bottom. So many of you turned in assignments that didn't have denominators at all. That's wrong. You must show the units. So even though you don't have to type in a one to the calculator, you must show how the units cross out as you go from fraction to fraction. So you will be marked wrong on a test or a quiz. So those of you that did that, you'll notice that in the comments section, I made a note that said, you know, please make sure to show all of your work because on a test or quiz, you're only going to get the one or maybe two points for the answer. You're going to lose five or six points by not showing this work, even if your answer is correct. Now, to finish this problem off, we're going to talk about significant figures. So if you notice up here, we have two significant figures. So our answer can only have two significant figures. So we're going to keep one. We're going to keep two. We're going to look behind it. So the two means we're not going to round up. So be careful. The answer is not 18. We don't chop off the end. We just round it. So we get 18,000 meters per week. That is our final answer here. Okay, I wanted to just take a look at how this is going to be typed in for this first problem. So if you notice, we have 2.6 kilometers per day. So if you notice, I'm using up three lines in order to do this. And then for my next fraction, I'm just going to set it up ahead of time here. And now I want to get rid of kilometers. So kilometers is going to go on the bottom. And I want to go to meters. That's going to go on top. Kilometers is the larger unit. So it gets the one. Meters is the smaller unit. It's three spots away. So it gets a one with three zeros. Oops. Now for my next fraction, I want to get rid of days and convert that to weeks. So some of us are going to get tripped up here. Just remember, days is on the bottom. So in order for it to cancel out, I have to put days on top. And I want to end up with weeks on the bottom. So I'm going to type weeks down here. 
And of course, everyone knows that one week has seven days. When we multiply this across, we wind up getting an answer of 18,200. And the only units that we have left are meters per week. Then, of course, when we account for significant figures, this turns out to be just 18,000 meters per week. So I just wanted to show everyone what that should look like uh, when it's actually typed into the document. Let's continue with problem two. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. So in problem number two, you can see that we have 35.6 milligrams per centimeter cubed, and we're trying to get to kilograms per liter. Okay, let's take a look. I want to get rid of this unit of milligrams, so I'm going to put milligrams on the bottom. I want to go to this unit of kilograms. So I'm going to put kilograms on top. I go up to my chart. I try and figure out which one is the bigger unit. Kilograms, which is way over here, or milligrams, which is over here. So clearly, the larger units are on the left side, so kilograms is going to be the larger unit. We're going to put the one with kilograms. Again, I mentioned this in the previous video, but I just want to remind everyone, don't oversimplify the process. It's not that the one goes on the bottom every time or the one goes on top every time. It's that the one goes with a larger unit. So kilograms is larger, so kilograms gets the one. Up here, kilometers was larger, so kilometers got the one. Notice, the one is on the bottom sometimes, the one is on top sometimes. Don't oversimplify it. The one goes with the larger unit. It doesn't always go on top. It doesn't always go on the bottom. Okay, let's take a look at the next step. So at this point, before I go any further, ooh, I forgot to write my milligrams here. So milligrams to kilograms. I move one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. So I need a one with one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. So there are one million milligrams in one kilogram. For my next part, I'm going to convert centimeters cubed, which is on the bottom here, into liters. So I need to put centimeters cubed on top. Now, most of us probably don't know the direct conversion between centimeters cubed and liters, but we did learn on the last example in the metric homework, metric conversion homework, that one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter. So because one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter, I can cross out centimeters cubed and convert that to milliliters. Again, you're not changing the number in this step, but it's still a very important step to write down because it shows how the unit of centimeters cubed goes away. So we're gonna cross out centimeters cubed here. We're gonna cross out centimeters cubed here. In our last step, we have milliliters. We're gonna get rid of milliliters and go to liters. So milliliters is on the bottom, so we put it on top. We're going to put liters on the bottom, and remember, that's where we want to end up with liters on the bottom. So now, here's liters, here's milliliters. Which one of the two is larger? Well, larger is closer to the left side, so that's going to be liters. So liters is going to get a one. Milliliters is one, two, three spots away. So I have a one with one, two, three zeros. Finally, I type this into my calculator, 35.6 divided by 1 million, divided by because it's on the bottom, times 1,000, times because it's on top. 
If a number is on the bottom, you divide by that number. If a number is on top, you multiply by that number. So for this problem, we wind up getting 0 0.0356. Now look at our units here. We have kilograms. We're going to keep that. Milliliters here and milliliters here drop out. So I have kilograms per liter. Finally, we look at significant figures. We have three significant figures here. So our answer can have three significant figures, and we have that, one, two, three. So that is our final answer. All right, we're gonna try three more problems together. Okay, let's take a look at problem number three. Here we have 60 yards per hour. 60 yards per hour, and we're trying to go from yards to inches and from hours to seconds. Okay, so first thing, we're going to convert yards. So currently yards is on the top. I'm going to put yards on the bottom. Some of us know how many inches are in a yard. Others don't, and that's fine. But we should all remember that there are three feet in a yard, and there are 12 inches in a foot. So if you remember that, you'll come up with 36 inches are in one yard. Now let's say you don't remember that number. You could do it in two steps. So yards cancel out, we'll go to three feet. And then finally, one foot, is 12 inches. So we might not know how many feet or inches are directly in a yard, but we can figure it out. And we might use two or three steps sometimes to do that. Okay, just real quick, a recap with our units. We're gonna cross out yards, that's now gone. And feet are gone. So we have in, uh, units of inches. And now for our last part, we're going to convert out of hours and get to seconds. Same thing here. Some of you know how many seconds there are in an hour. Others don't. So I'm going to show you what it would look like if you didn't know it. But you should know the following. Hours is going to go on top because hours is currently on the bottom and we want it to cancel out. So hours go on top. We might not know how many seconds are in an hour, but we should know how many minutes are in an hour. So one hour has 60 minutes. That allows me to cross out units of hours. Hours drops out here, hours drops out here. And in the next fraction, I can say that there are, so now I'm gonna cross out minutes, there are 60 seconds in every one minute, and that will allow me to cross out units of minutes. So those two are now gone. Now I can type all of this into my calculator. So I have 60 times 3 times 12, because it's on top, divided by 60, and then divided by 60 again. So typing into my calculator, 60 times 3 times 12, all three of those are on top. Then I hit divided by 60. Then again, I hit divided by 60. And I wind up with an answer of 0 0.6. And I now have my unit of inches per second. 0 0.6 inches per second. So let's take a look at this. We have, in this number, one significant figure. And over here, we have one significant figure. So that is our final answer. Let's take a look at the next problem. We have 8.3 feet per second.
8.3 feet per second, and we're going to yards per hour. So I'm gonna first convert from feet into yards. So feet is on top, feet has to go on the bottom. Yards are going to go on top. One yard has three feet in it. Next part, I'm going from seconds into hours. Right now I have seconds on the bottom of a fraction, so that means I need to put it on top. And hours has to go on the bottom. This time I am gonna take the shortcut here. So I'm gonna say one hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. So that's just these two fractions that were in the previous problem multiplied together. 60 times 60 is 3,600. So for this answer, I get 8.3, divided by three times 3,600, 9,960, 9,960. Let's take a look at the units. So we have seconds crossing out with seconds. We have feet crossing out with feet. So I'm left with units of yards over hours. Okay, for my last part, I'm gonna look at significant figures. Over here, I have two significant figures. So I need to get two significant figures in my answer. Now, I did this with some of my other classes already, and this is tough, it's tricky. So I mentioned that this might be a possibility when we talked about a different assignment uh, a few days ago. Here's one significant figure, here's my second one. I need to look behind it, it's a six, so I'm gonna round up. So 9,960, when I round up, this becomes a zero, this becomes a 10. That turns out to, the, turn, turns out to be 10,000 yards per hour. Now, hopefully some of you are looking at me saying, nope, 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 that's still wrong, right? Because we need two significant figures. This only has one significant figure. So I heard all kinds of answers from the other classes. Oh, make it 11,000 or 10,100 or make it 9,000. Just forget about the other digits. You can't do any of that. So this is one of those rare cases, but you will see this occasionally, where in order to report your answer to the correct number of significant figures, you are forced to put it into scientific notation. So this answer of 10,000, that's not gonna work. So instead, what we're gonna write is 1.0 times 10 to the fourth yards per hour. They both mean 10,000, but this has the two significant figures that we're looking for. This only has one significant figure. So a correct answer would be this. Now, if you are sitting at home and you are struggling and you're saying, I don't get it. Keep in mind, this is gonna get you most of the points. This is only gonna give you one extra point. So if you're unsure of how to get from here to here, you can certainly ask, but even if you were to make a mistake, it's only gonna cost you a point on a test or a quiz. All right, let's take a look at our final example down here at the bottom. We have 0 0.71 centimeters per second and we're going to kilometers per hour. So in this case, we wanna get rid of, let's say we're gonna put centimeters on the bottom, kilometers on top. We look up here at our chart, I'm just gonna move these marks here. We look up here at our chart, we have centi down here, we have kilometers way over here. So kilometers is definitely the larger one. Remember that we're larger on the left side. This is larger, these guys are smaller. And to go from centimeters to kilometers, we move five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. So that means I'm gonna write a one with one, two, three, four, five zeros. That will allow me to cross out centimeters. 
the unit of centimeters gone. Next part, I'm going from seconds to hours. So again, if I have seconds on the bottom, I'm gonna put seconds on top, 3,600 seconds. And on the bottom, I'm going to put one hour. I'm gonna go through this calculation. So I have 0.71 divided by 100,000 times 3,600. And I get the following answer, 0 0.02556. That has units of kilometers per hour. Just to show you how the units cross out here, seconds, seconds go away. So I'm left with kilometers on top, hours on the bottom. Now the last piece of this, so that's one answer. Taking into account, I have two significant figures here. So if I rewrite this answer to two significant figures, I'm gonna get 0 0.026 kilometers per hour. Okay, at this point, what I'm asking you to do is to pause the video. I want you to try on your own numbers six through 10. Trust me. There's a benefit to trying to do this on your own. So pause the video, try numbers six through 10 on your own. When you're all done, even if you made mistakes, that's okay, press play and I'm gonna go over numbers six through 10. Okay, I'm back. I trust that all of you paused the video and worked on numbers six through 10, hopefully. Um, we're going to go over those now, and I'll let's see how we did. So, in question number six, we have 10 grams over centimeters cubed. Now, remember that centimeters cubed, a cubic unit, those are the tricky ones, so you have to do something special here. So I'm going to just erase centimeters cubed, and I'm going to write out what it actually means. Centimeters times centimeters, times centimeters. So I'm actually going from grams to grams, so I don't have to change that, and centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed. So I'm gonna do this over three fractions here. If I look at my chart, here's my base unit again. On this side I have deca, hecto, Kilo, this is the larger side. On the smaller side, I have deci, centi, milli, smaller numbers. Remember that deci and centi are right next to each other. Deci is the larger one, centi is the smaller one. So I'm going to put centimeters on top so it cancels out, decimeters on the bottom. Decimeters is larger, so it gets the one. Centi is only one spot away, so that's a one with just one zero. When I multiply this by 10, that gets rid of one of my centimeters, like that. I have to do this three times. So 10 centimeters per one decimeter, 10 centimeters, centimeters per one decimeter. So that crosses out centimeters, and centimeters, and I'm left with decimeters, decimeters, decimeters on the bottom, which is decimeters cubed, and this is 10 times 10 times 10, that's 1,000, times 10 is 10,000, 10,000 grams per decimeter cubed. Those of you that saw that trick might have done this instead, which is also correct. So a second way to do this problem, 10 grams per centimeter cubed. If you recognize that centimeter cubed and decimeter cubed are not just a one to 10 ratio, you can do this in one step. So decimeters cubed would be larger and centimeters cubed would be up here. 
there are 1,000 centimeters cubed in one decimeter cubed. So again, you're going to get 10,000 centimeters cubed crosses out grams per decimeter cubed. If you understand how to do it that way, then by all means, please do it that way. But if you don't understand why you're doing it that way, please break it down into these more manageable steps so that you can get yourself to the correct answer. Let's take a look at problem number seven. So in problem number seven, we have 0 0.598 milligrams over centimeters cubed. Notice, milligrams going to grams, Centimeters cubed is not changing, so we don't have to do anything with that part. So this is just going to be a one-step problem here. Milligrams is on top. We want to cancel it, so we put it on the bottom. Grams is what we want to end up with. If we look, grams is a base unit, so grams, meter, and liter, they're all in here. And milligrams is the smaller one way down here. So grams is larger, so grams gets the one. To go from milligrams to grams, we move one, two, three spots. So one with one, two, three zeros. So this number we're gonna take and divide by, because a thousand is on the bottom. We're gonna divide by a thousand, so we get 0 0.000598 grams over centimeters cubed. Taking a quick look at significant figures, we have three significant figures here. We have three significant figures here, so this is our final answer. I neglected to do this for the previous one, so if we take a look here, we have one significant figure, and our answer here also has one significant figure, so that is also correct. All right, we're gonna try numbers eight, nine, and 10. So in question number eight, I have 2.70 centimeters cubed per minute, and I'm trying to get to liters per week. So let's start off with the centimeters cubed. I know centimeters cubed has to go on the bottom because right now it's on top, so I have to cancel it, so I'm gonna put it on the bottom. I don't know, let's pretend, I don't know how many centimeters cubed are in a week, are in a liter. I certainly don't know how many are in a week. Let's pretend I don't know how many centimeters cubed are in a liter. I'm gonna go to milliliters first. So I'm gonna say, okay, one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter. That allows me to cross out my unit of centimeters cubed. Goes out here, goes out here. Next thing. Okay, so now I can continue, and I'm going to say milliliters goes on the bottom, liters goes on top. That's what we're trying to get to. I do know this conversion. Milli is down here, liter is here. That means liter is bigger, it gets the one. Milli is one, two, three spots away. So I put a one with three zeros. Now that unit of milliliters is gone. Next part, I'm trying to get from minutes into weeks. Now, most of us don't know how many minutes are in a week. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use conversions that we do know. So we don't know how many minutes are in a week, but we do know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So that allows me to get rid of that unit of minutes. Notice it's on the bottom here. So it needs to be on top up here. And then the next one that we're gonna say is, okay, well, I don't know how many hours are in a week, but I do know how many hours are in a day. So I'm gonna put 24 hours up here for one day down here. So now I can cross out my unit of hours, gone. And then finally, 
now we're at a point where I do know that there are seven days in one week. And that allows me to cross out the unit of days. So days are gone from there and there. And the only units that I have left are liters and weeks. So my answer is going to be in liters per week. Now the only thing I have to do is type all of this into the calculator. So I have 2.7. That's this part. I don't have to type in one, don't have to type in one, don't have to type in one. So I'm going to hit divided by 1,000 because it's on the bottom. Then times it by 60 because it's on top. Times it by 24 because it's on top. Times it by 7 because it's on top. And I get an answer of 27.216. I know you can't see my calculator. I'm actually holding it up so that the light shines on the screen. So the last part here is to look at significant figures. I have three significant figures here. That means my answer can only have three. So one, two, here's my last one I can keep. 27.216 is going to become just 27.2 liters per week. This is my final answer. Okay, number nine. We have 1.12 grams over centimeters cubed. For the first part, we're going to go from grams here to kilograms here. So grams, kilograms. Let's look up here. Grams is in my base unit box. Kilograms is all the way to the left. So kilograms gets the one. I have to move one, two, three spots over. So one, two, three zeros. So right now I can cancel out my unit of grams. The next part, this time I am gonna take that shortcut. The next part, remember we said this earlier, if I'm going from centimeters cubed, which I'm gonna put on top, so it cancels out with the one on the bottom, directly to decimeters cubed, it is decimeters are larger, so it gets a one. There are 1,000 centimeters cubed in a decimeter cubed. 1,000 is coming from the fact that there are 10 centimeters in a decimeter, but because it's cubic, it's 10 times 10 times 10, or 1,000. I like this problem because not only do our units of centimeters cubed cross out here, but also our thousands cross out because we have thousand on top, thousand on the bottom. So we wind up with a number of 1.12, just like we started with, but now it has units of kilograms per decimeter cubed. And then finally, my last problem here that we're gonna do together so we have 20 kilometers per hour, and we're going to meters per second. So first thing, I'm going to get rid of kilometers, so I'm going to put that on the bottom. I'm going to go to meters. Kilometers is the larger unit. Meters is over here in the base unit. So kilometers gets the one. Meters is one, two, three spots away. So there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. So now I can cross out units of kilometers. And oops, another step here. So now I'm going to go from hours to seconds. We said earlier we have hours on the bottom, we want hours on top. 
seconds on the bottom. One hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 3,600 seconds. So for this problem, I have 20 times 1,000 divided by 3,600. That turns out to be the number 5.55555, just repeating. That's hours goes away, so we're left with meters per second. When we look at significant figures, we have one significant figure here. So that means our final answer is going to be one significant figure. We look behind it. Five tells us we're going to round up. So we're going to get six meters per second as our final answer. Okay, I hope that uh, we have a pretty good sense about what we're doing here. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to ask you for homework to finish numbers 11 to 15. So you're going to hand in a homework assignment where 1 to 10 are going to be done because we did those together, or sort of. And then 11 to 15 you're going to complete for homework. And you're going to submit using the submit button on the Google Doc. Please let me know if you have any questions. And again, as always, I have office hours set up at the end of the week. So please stop in if you're confused and you'd like to go over a few problems together. Thanks very much, everyone.